Jesus the Good Shepherd. This is a very famous image in Christian circles. Interestingly, the way people see it, the way they understand it, it depends on the context. Once again, context is everything. So maybe if someone comes from maybe a more urban context, uh, we, we will have this image in our mind of the little cute sheep and that Jesus is holding and protecting and this image is very reassuring, very comforting. Maybe if you come from, from a more rural context, well, sheep is maybe a source of income and protecting your sheep against wolf or looking for those who are missing are very essential because losing one or two sheep is maybe the difference between breaking even or having a little profit at the end of your year. Context, once again, is essential, is important. In Jesus' time, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, uh, resonate with good leadership. It's throughout uh, the ancient Middle East, this image across different culture. For example, uh, in the Bible, we learn that King David began his life as a shepherd, and he became one of the greatest king of his people. And this image of a good shepherd speak about leadership. A good leader is able to both show the way and also know when to slow down for the benefit of the sheep. And also remind us when we're saying that Jesus is the good shepherd that none of us, regardless of our position or title or life experience, are in charge. We're not the shepherd, especially sometimes we think of clergy as shepherds. No, that's not. We are all a sheep among a larger flock of sheep. We're not the one calling the shot. We're not the one deciding even who's in, in or out of the flock. No, we are among the flock. We're following the shepherd. And our task is to create a community that will welcome others. Our job is to making space for others, regardless of their status, their abilities, their origin, language, so on. We're not the one deciding who can join the flock or not. I, I remember uh, a while ago, there was a conversation on Facebook uh, about, uh, is, about the United Church and wondering if we, if the tent, I will say, if our, our flock was too large, we, too, we extended too much and we lost our identity, we lost ourselves. And many people remind each other this, this is not our tent. We are the one dwelling under the tent, and our job is to welcome all of those who want to join us under the tent. We might have rules, we might have procedures, we have concepts like membership, but too often we forget that this is not our church. We are not the leaders. We are part of this flock. And it brings us the question, who do we overlook? Who do we exclude by our practices? Are we, who are we, who are we uncomfortable when it's time to welcome someone in our midst? Can we really say that we are following Christ while we're not ready to make space for all? Like really space for all not just the flavor of the month, not just what is convenient or politically, uh, there's a payoff at the end, but everyone. These are the questions that this passage from the Gospel of John is raising. Accepting, jo accepting Jesus as a good shepherd is, I would say, fairly easy. Accepting everything that comes with it, 
that we are not in charge. We're part of this large flock, and we're not the one deciding who belongs or, or do not belong. That's the challenge for us today. And I hope that you will have good conversation about that, about what does it mean for this 21st century, what it means for your context. And that's it for today. I hope you're taking care of yourself during this time of spring. And I'm remaining the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.